In this video, we're going to start looking at um, com making decisions about whether we should invest or not. And we're going to talk about two things, defining alternatives and then the various methods that are involved in evaluation. And what are, um, how are those, not how are those calculated, but what are those various methods. So when we talk about alternatives, um, sometimes it's really easy to decide whether the, what the alternatives are. And we're going to go on an example of that. Um, just to always to remember there's a do-nothing alternative. Sometimes the do-nothing alternative means that you have to shut down operations, but, but we always need to remember it's one of the things we can always do. And one of the things when we're looking at alternatives, we want to look at the complexity of this. So if I did this alternative, what would be different than if I did, if I did that alternative? So looking at really what are the differences between alternative choices, and we'll look at an example of that. And just to know that we only are going to be looking at things that are different between alternatives. We're not going to look at the total sales of the corporation. We're only going to look at if we did this product or this product. What would the difference be? Not what are the, what's the whole sales values. So we, we need to be kind of careful about that. So one of the alternatives that's an easy choice is are we going to buy this bump or this pump? And they both might have an, a different initial cost. They might have different ongoing maintenance costs or performance or lives. Um, so we need to spell out those two alternatives and just compare them directly. This is a very good example of mutually exclusive alternatives, meaning we do one or the other and we don't do both. Most alternatives we look at are that way, where we just compare two things where we, don't, we can't do both, we can do one or the other. And this is a simple example of one of the kinds of decisions you might make as an engineer um, when you're comparing alternatives. Another example is leasing a piece of equipment. So the lease has an a initial cost and then an ongoing lease payment, and there might be a small end of period time. Versus buying it, where we spend a large amount at the end, and then we have a salvage value where we sell it at the end. At the, we, we buy it at the beginning and sell it at the end. So these are very different cash flow alternatives, and they just are the same thing, and we can't do both. We can either lease or buy, but we need to look at what is the difference between the two. Another example of the kinds of alternatives you might define. Um, you also might look at, well, I have a whole bunch of different options. I can invest in a vending machine. I can invest in Apple stocks. I can invest in a friend's startup, or I can do nothing. So this is an example of the do nothing alternative. So we have all of these, they have different cash flow shapes, they have different um, values initially, different ongoing values. And so when we define these, these again are mutually exclusive. We can, or actually we can do a vending machine and an Apple stock and a friend's startup. So we can kind of look at all the different combinations of alternatives. These ones, I'm, these ones are not mutually exclusive. But the question is, what time period are you considering? And so when you're comparing something, you need to say, well, for how long am I going to be looking at doing this investment? Is it going to be six years? Is it going to be three years? Is it going to be one year? So really deciding that ahead of time and then comparing the alternatives on that time period. And so they have to have equal time periods when we're comparing them. Um, they also, most of the time, should be mutually exclusive. I talked about that a minute ago, where we choose one of them. Um, so an example of automating an assembly line, so let's, this is a famous video, I'm not going to show it, but you know of, of an assembly line, or are we going to put a piece of machine there, machinery there that does the work for the people? So in this case, this is a very complex problem because we need to consider what would change if we didn't have the assembly line, if we didn't have the manual assembly line when we went to automation. We'd have different labor costs, different machine costs, different production rates, maybe um, different utility values in each of the cases. So how would that impact in the dollar amount? So a lower manual labor, but there might be an additional higher cost labor. You might have to actually hire somebody to manage the machinery, and that might cost more. Um, th those people might, you might pay those people more than you would the manual labor. So you need to look at what are the differences. There's no conveyor, but there might be higher automated machinery costs and higher maintenance costs. So you need to look at that one versus the other. You might have increased production, which might um, contribute into more profit because you'll be able to sell more items. You might have increased use of electricity when you automate. So all of these need to be completely spelled out. And we'll look at practicing this in class. Um, 
but we might have the same base. So what doesn't change when you're looking at alternatives? So in this case, you might have the same base production only include slight increase from the automation. You have the same facilities, so you don't need to include rent. You have the same managers. You have the same delivery methods. All of those can be excluded from the analysis because they're the same in both alternatives. So um, now we're going to look at what are the different ways that we might evaluate these kinds of investment, the different methods of evaluation. So there's five general ones that people use, a payback, net present value, equivalent annual cost or benefits, rate of return, and benefit cost ratio. Payback, the question is, how long will it take me to get my money back? And the units is usually in years. So I make an investment, and then the question is, how long in, until I get that back? Net present value, this is the value added to the firm when you make the decision to um, make an investment. And the reason I have a stock market here is that the net present value is a very, very useful method because it directly relates to the value of the firm and the stock price. So if you make a good investment, the value of the firm is going to go up immediately and that will be reflected in the stock price. Um, another evaluation method is equivalent annual cost or benefit. So in this case, we might look at the top um, cash flows and say, well, what is the equivalent yearly annual cash flow? So what we're doing is converting it not to a present value, but to a, an annual value. So the units is dollars per year. Another method is rate of return. So in this case, we might say, what interest rate am I earning? on this investment. What is the percent return per year? So that's the um, rate of return method. And then there's benefit costs where we look at the ratio of the benefits to the costs. And we usually put this in present value of benefits, the present value of costs, but the units is a ratio and it should be greater than one. The benefits should be greater than the cost. So those are the general evaluation methods. So in this video, we looked at defining alternatives and various methods of evaluation. Now we're going to move into calculations of those various methods.